Hi guys, I'm Kristen Tate with Rebel Buzz, and here are three stories you may have missed in the mainstream media this week. A bombshell report reveals that Congress paid out $17 million in taxpayer funding for settlements to federal employees. The settlements were for violations including sexual harassment. Now while the identity of most of the alleged congressional abusers are kept a secret, we now know who at least one of them is. Top Congressional Democrat John Conyers paid a female staffer $27,000 in taxpayer funding after he fired her because she allegedly refused his sexual advances. Now Conyers is from Michigan and he's the longest serving member in the House. Aside from the congressman's reputation on Capitol Hill as being a civil rights icon, he's now an alleged sexual predator. Pretty shocking stuff. Conyers allegedly preyed on female staffers for years. This is nothing new, and it's finally being exposed now for the first time. Allegations against him include requests for sex acts from his female staffers, caressing their hands sexually, and rubbing their legs and backs in public disgusting. The public never knew about these allegations until now because the congressman paid his accusers hush money for settlements using tax dollars. And remember, Conyers is not the only prominent politician doing this. $17 million worth of taxpayer subsidized settlements have been made. That's our money. A lot of people are wondering, why is there a taxpayer subsidized fund for such settlements in the first place? Taxpayers like us have been unknowingly footing hush money bills for decades. Yet, all the while, the identity of abusers in Congress often remains a secret to the public. Here's the bottom line. It's become clear that sexual harassment and misconduct is a bigger problem than a lot of us thought. And all the while, taxpaying Americans have been helping to fund this culture for years without even knowing it. This could be one of the biggest political scandals of the decade. While we're on the subject of Conyers, let's look at House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi's reaction. Democrats love to champion themselves as fearless fighters for women's rights. But often, when abusers are in their own party, Democrats are willing to turn a blind eye. Pelosi is a symbol of the left and calls herself a feminist, a defender of women. Yet in the face of the new allegations against Conyers, a prominent Democrat, Pelosi seems to have no problem throwing women under the bus. This last weekend, Pelosi defended Conyers, calling him an icon amid the allegations that he fired a woman on his staff after she refused to engage in sexual activities with him. Conyers, what does that mean for him right yeah, now? But let's say in or out. we are strengthened by due process. Mm -hmm. Just because someone is accused, and, and was it one accusation, is it two? I think there has to be. John Conyers is an icon in our country. He has done a, gr a great deal to protect women, Violence Against Women Act, which the left wing, right wing is now quoting me as praising him for his work on that, and he did great work on that. Even the left wing media is calling out Nancy Pelosi for defending Conyers. But make no mistake, this is hardly the first time Pelosi has defended a sexual predator. Back in the 1990s, she regularly offered full-throated defenses of then-President Bill Clinton, even when he was accused of rape by Juanita Broderick. Check it out. Why the silence when there have been these allegations, serious ones, about President Clinton? Well, I'd like to say that I think that the women of America are speaking out about what they uh, think about this whole situation. And the women of America are just like other Americans in that they value fairness, they value privacy and do not want to see an, a person with uncontrolled power, uncontrolled time, uncontrolled, uh, unlimited money uh, investigating at the President of the United States. And while she was Speaker of the House, Pelosi ignored sexual harassment claims against former Democratic Congressman Bob Filner. Filner sexually harassed female veterans who were victims of rape. Abusing his position of power, Filner offered the rape victims help in return for dates. Bottom line, Nancy Pelosi has never been a feminist hero. Like so many other Democrats, she simply uses buzzwords associated with feminism to mobilize low information voters. She regularly rails against the Republicans' war on women, but ignores the real assaults on women when the abusers are in her own party. It's insulting to women. 
especially victims of sexual misconduct, the same women that Democrats claim to be champions for. And finally, we all know that Hollywood is overwhelmingly liberal, which is why it came as a surprise to hear one major actor express a view that doesn't necessarily fit neatly within the left-wing thought box. Actor Denzel Washington is getting backlash from the left this week after he blamed black-on-black -black crime on the lack of a strong family unit, rather than on the prison system in the U.S. Not surprisingly, left-wingers took to Twitter and immediately attacked Washington for his comments. They seized the opportunity to portray Washington as being a traitor to the African-American community. And by the way, this isn't the first time Washington has made such comments. What Washington suggested is that the real problem for Black Americans is not the prison system. After all, people are already in trouble before they get to prison. Rather, one big problem facing the Black community is the breakdown of two-parent households. Check this out. Over 70% of Black children grow up in a single-parent home today. That's shocking. Without a strong family unit at home, young people often lack guidance and support during their most formative years. Meanwhile, many inner cities continue to struggle economically as liberalism makes it simply too expensive for companies to expand and grow and hire people. What Washington said was not anti-black at all. The black community, like all Americans, deserve to be lifted up with policies that help promote solid family units and economic stability. And before we can put uplifting policies in place, we need to have an honest and accurate discussion and identify the problems. I'm Kristen Tate, and that is The Buzz.